And the next one will be Mr. Eun Sik, okay, because uh, actually Osama mentioned ICA, the International Cooperative Alliance, several times. Uh, we will let uh, uh, Mr. Eun to speak first, because the other Korean speaker, we actually hired a, a translator for, for the next, but the, the translator has uh, some problem, couldn't make it. So we, are, we got our very brave, okay, uh, our student, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, interpreter to take the place of the professional uh, uh, translator. So now they need a little bit more time to get ready for the translation. So the next is uh, Mr. Eun, uh, uh, representing ICA. Let's put our hands together. Good afternoon. Uh, nice to meet you here uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, my name is Hyung Shik Om. I'm, I'm South Korean, but I've been working in Belgium uh, since the last 10 years, and now I'm uh, strategy and statistics co coordinator in the ICA. So uh, today I present something about uh, cooperatives in general, and uh, the first part of my presentation would be more formal one, but uh, the, last, uh, the second part might be more uh, based on my personal observation, because uh, from the ICA side, we don't have any uh, the important thing uh, done uh, concerning prep and cooperativism. So we are just starting. So I will share the, my personal opinion about that issue. So, so I, uh, already the Mr. Uh, Nakano uh, shared some information about ICA and global cooperative movement. Uh, I wanted to share the more detailed information. It's it's my job, actually the statistics and data is my job in the organization. And uh, as you can see, uh, the, the difference between the, what uh, Mr. Nakano uh, presented and uh, myself, mine is the, uh, actually he uh, used the formal data, so the data validated by members. But I used this, um, I made this table based on the more, uh, the different kind of sources. So it's uh, not formal not officially the validated one, but we use this table to show the more general overview on cooperatives uh, all over the world. Here you can see the, uh, the, the number of cooperatives are now more than three, three million uh, unit cooperatives. And we uh, cooperatives employ, uh, the directly employed uh, more or less the two, uh, 27 uh, million people. Uh, but with employee of cooperatives, also, also the worker members who work in cooperatives. They are, uh, they are the full-time workers in cooperatives. But we also have the producer members who are not employed by cooperatives, but they, their production activity, like the farmers, fishermen, and all artisans, they are, they are, the business and uh, production activities very depend on the cooperatives. So they uh, can be considered uh, Related to the cooperatives for their the business and the production activity, they are quite many, and then we have the the user members who are not uh, related to the uh, directly work in cooperatives. They use cooperative like the the member of the uh, the bank cooperative, consumer cooperatives, but they are user. In general, we can say that such a numbers of the huge number of the members uh, exist in, uh, in the world. And uh, you can see the, 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 the below Asia uh, cooperatives and the cooperative members represent a uh, really important part of the, uh, the uh, movement in terms of the number of cooperatives, number of the worker members, producer members. Asia represents less the user members because it is more uh, many cooperatives in Asia uh, continent are producer cooperatives like the farmer agriculture cooperative, fishery cooperatives. So uh, you can see the difference and also the all the the overview of the cooperatives. And uh, you, I, I have to say that the the important part of the the number of cooperative members in Asia actually uh, come from China and India. And the data uh, Mr. Nakano presented, there was no, no China data because Chinese. Uh, cooperative movement uh, don't report their statistics. So we don't know, actually. The, we just have the estimation. Uh, they, uh, the number, estimate number, sometimes the appeared in the media, other things, but 
the, I don't know why, but the Chinese cooperative movement or the government, uh, offic they don't uh, officially report the number of cooperatives and members. So just we have the estimation. And anyway, the China is the, the, the biggest country uh, which have the cooperatives and uh, cooperative members, and India is second. And the two countries represent more or less half of the uh, Asian country cooperative movement. So we, we can just see more about the uh, different type of cooperatives, like agriculture fishery cooperatives, produce cooperatives in industry service sector, like uh, the transport, taxi, or other things. But their members are not employed. They are just independent workers or self-employed. And worker cooperatives, social cooperatives, consumer user cooperatives, and other types of cooperatives. So we have very variety, the model of the cooperatives in Asia as well. And for the, this kind of the cooperative, what, uh, uh, what does the platform cooperativism mean? Uh, from this point, uh, it's more my personal observation. We don't have any spe the specific position about uh, the, these issues. But for me, the, we can say that it's phenomenon. It's not yet something concrete for me, and, and, and least phenomenon, which indicate that three different things. One is that we observe emergence of the new uh, model of cooperatives, uh, which uh, work mainly based on the uh, online platform economy, which is also the new. And second, the phenomenon is that there are the many existing cooperatives already uh, existed since a long time, but their activity business model are reinterpreted or re, uh, they are adapted to the new economy. And in that way, they are not exactly invented for the, this concept, but they are reinterpreted as platform cooperative or co in the frame of the platform cooperativism. I, I think it's very important part of the phenomenon. And uh, the, the, second, uh, the third point is that there are new technological the development or the new tools uh, cooperatives start using uh, also the, in considering new the technological de development. But it's not cooperative itself which changed. It's their tool or the, some very part of the, their work. Like the agricultural cooperatives now are starting using the smart farm system, but they are basically agricultural cooperatives. They starting use some program or the tools. So uh, I would say that uh, for focusing more uh, precisely the issue, we need to focus more on the, the first and second type of the issues new forms of cooperatives and uh, existing cooperatives which uh, are now the transforming into the new forms of business model, uh, rather than more general issue around technological development in cooperatives. It, this is important, but it's not, uh, I, I think that this, if we put this issue into the same package of the, the platform cooperativism, it can make some confusion. So I want to focus the first and second issues more. So for ICA, as I said, we, we don't have any, uh, much things uh, already done, but we ha in, in, in the ICA members, we have observed that the increasing interest on the platform cooperativism and then uh, other uh, the new models of cooperatives. So uh, based on that, last year, the ICA General Assembly adopted a resolution on the platform cooperativism, which was the proposed by American and British Organization of Cooperatives. So they uh, proposed the, that the ICA have to work on that. Uh, so uh, the following this resolution, now the, in the ICA, we are uh, now starting constituting uh, the working group on this platform cooperativism. It, it, it just starts. So, uh, their role would be to clarify the issue and the define what is, would be the important thing for cooperatives and uh, what, have to, uh, what the ICA have to uh, the promote this movement. So the, the result would be uh, pr probably the report the next uh, General Assembly of the ICA uh, nine, two, uh, next year. So that is what uh, we, we can say officially. But personally, I have some questions. I want to share the, these questions because uh, there are many people who today and tomorrow probably the, will uh, promote the idea of the platform cooperativism based on the, the, your the very uh, special experience. But I'm working a little bit far from the, the, the field, so I need to understand better 
But I have some questions about those things to, uh, to you who practice the, these ideas. For instance, quite many, just I want to the, won't say several, just. Uh, for instance, uh, I, I observed that in many IT industry or the prep cooperatives, there are different type of members who have more power, more substantial power, who can make uh, IT techniques, and many members who do not uh, know anything about technique, just they are user. Uh, is it possible that with the one person, one bot principle, can balance the, the, the different power between uh, a whole, uh, head by different the, these kind of the members? Is it possible or not? We need to think about it because the cooperative itself cannot provide solve all problem. So uh, we have some related problems, like uh, also the another problem. Can you find investors who can accept their limited power, but invest more with patients? I'm not sure. And uh, many platform cooperatives examples. Uh, actually, I found that they are registered as IT company, not. Uh, in their sector, like the taxi cooperatives, or, or uh, no, the car sharing cooperatives, or the some care service cooperatives, they are uh, they work in the transport sector or the care service sector, but they are in, in registered as IT companies sometimes, not always. And then uh, how they can uh, respect the old regulations or other things for their workers or the, or the users who work through their platform? Uh, just question. And without specific institutional uh, the arrangement, so like we always criticize the problem of the Uber, who uh, do not provide any the social protection or the the right at work to the users, drivers. But for the platform cooperativism, without any the legal new legal status, can we provide those things to our members? I'm not sure. I don't see the many examples. I want to see, and then it should be uh, the more known at the international level to, uh, to diffuse. And uh, how can innovations in platform cooperatives can be quite compensated? There are, the, I, I the found there are some very uh, nice idea who also have the capacity of the uh, technological capacity and the business plan. How these, the smart people's the capacity and the knowledge can be correctly compensated in cooperatives because cooperatives Usually, we emphasize more equal treatment. So sometimes the innovators the, uh, would not be motivated in cooperatives. It's, it's possible. So how you can motivate them, or should we uh, should we should cooperatives necessarily have that kind of innovation? Some more. Uh, yes, it's the same thing. The equal power distribution. It, uh, it might discourage, uh, dismotivate the founders' entrepreneurship. How you can uh, the, uh, promote that? And sometimes we we delegate our moral, ethical, or social uh, judgment to just software. So uh, what is good? We can choose one over the sub menu. Is it correct or not? We need to discuss more about what is good, what is bad, and what we should. But sometimes we, uh, in the technological the field, I found that many things are just considered as the uh, A key to uh, A key, B key, or C key, something like that in sub, sub medicine. So this kind of the, the technical uh, approach would be good or not? And then one, most of the, one of the most important points I found is that many platform cooperatives wanted to have more members but they cannot cover all members. So they have also important part of the non-member tra transaction. And is it good? Because cooperative should be based on the maturity, cooperation among members. If they have more non-members and they get money, the money, can, uh, money uh, does not come from members. It's co members cooperation. It's money from the non-members uh, money, po the pocket. So uh, would it be legitimate to distribute the money from the non-members among members? Is it correct? And then uh, last, can cooperative follow the Silicon Valley model? Should we? So these kind of things, I'm, I'm just wondering how, how we can answer. And just some 
possible my answers, uh, each just hypothetical answers. My principle about uh, those issues, platform cooperatives, is just one. I will see case by case. I, I don't know what is the platform cooperative in general. I, I don't know. I don't have an idea. But I want to meet and discuss with the individual, the single uh, examples to understand better. And then we will arrive at uh, find more concrete, more the beneficial model of the uh, platform cooperativism. That's why, why I uh, joined this meeting. And some other ideas you can see. Uh, but uh, for instance, we need to uh, refresh about existing cooperative model to understand new phenomena. And then we, uh, I, uh, uh, we can focus more on the multi-stakeholder cooperative model, which might be more useful for platform cooperativism, but with uh, the careful uh, design. And finally, we also observe the new models, very interesting. Probably we can hear uh, tomorrow, today and tomorrow, uh, from different countries. Uh, these are already the, under the, uh, the examination of the, the ICA, and you want to share all the results. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Yoon, for another very professional and uh, exactly 15 minutes. Uh, and raised so many uh, important questions. One of them is uh, the power balance between coders and uh, other co-op members. I think probably uh, Sun Chen in his uh, uh, you know, uh, talk after the tea break will address uh, this power balance. Another just very quick comment is that uh, it's actually quite, uh, I would say it's uh, quite common now. When I go to, last day I was in uh, ILO, I was not visiting uh, Simeon uh, was visiting another research organ, and uh, the director for that research unit was also from Korea. Okay, and we can see there are Turkish colleagues. Okay, there are uh, uh, Chinese colleagues. Okay, in uh, UNESCO, it's actually not uncommon to meet Asian colleagues when we go to. Uh, this is a message to the Asian, okay, uh, representative. Uh, it, we can meet. We can see them at the international level, not just within Asia. Okay, so we, uh, that's. Uh, I encourage everyone to uh, talk to Mr. Yun, know more about uh, ICA, right, and continue the, with the discussion.